Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 1047B, and today's date is August 12th, 2016, and the title of the episode is, The Clock is Ticking Down to a Major Event. Now, before we get started, I just want to make an announcement. Tomorrow, Saturday morning, I will be uploading an interview with Andy Hoffman. If you are on the x22report.com email alert system, you'll get an email in the morning. Otherwise, you can go right over to the X22 Report Spotlight YouTube channel. You'll be able to see the interview there. Or you can come over to the x22report.com site, scroll down a little bit, look over to your right-hand side, you'll see the video there. Or you can go to newssentinel.com, same thing, scroll down a little bit, look over to your right-hand side, and you can play the interview there. Let's get into the economic collapse, political and geopolitical news. Now, we know President Obama, he wants the TPP. And of course, this was written and created by the corporations, central banks. And this is not a benefit to the people whatsoever. Actually, it's going to make it worse for the people. It's going to make it worse for the United States. But they don't care about that. As long as the corporations make their money, profit is all they care about, controlling the people, is what they care about. But very interestingly, Obama decided to put Congress on notice. Now, we know that Congress, they're on vacation until after Labor Day. But the White House, they decided to put Congress on notice this morning that it'll be sending lawmakers a bill to implement the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Now, we know this was all done in secret. You have to pass it to read it. And that should tell us right there and then, this is not something we should do. If anything needs to be secret, if anything needs to be behind closed doors, how possibly could it be for the people? It isn't. Just like we've seen everything else. The Affordable Care Act, is that really a benefit to the people? The Patriot Act, benefit to the people? No, and we can go on and on and on. None of this is a benefit to the people. It's benefit to the U.S. government. It's a benefit to the corporations. It's a benefit to the central bank. And none of it is for the people. They're not working for the people anymore. They're working for the central banks, the corporations, and foreign governments. Now, very interestingly, the United States usually comes out with warnings of not to visit certain countries. They come out with travel warnings saying there could be fighting there which really means the United States will be in that country pushing terrorism, bringing in the soldiers, and this is why they don't want Americans in that area. But what we're seeing is there's a lot of countries putting up travel warnings against coming to America for racism, gun violence, police shootings, and the Zika virus. And we can see right now that People are looking at the United States and they're scratching their heads saying, what happened to this country? Well, what happened was we let a government grow too big. We let a government control every aspect of our lives. We let a government intertwine with corporations and central banks. We let a government not to be accountable to the people. And once we did all of this, this government no longer works for the people. The country turns into a fascist country where government and corporations meld into one. And it's all about controlling the people. And this is what happened to America. And we can see right now, this was not the plan of the Founding Fathers. The plan was to have a small government. The executive branch. They were secretaries. You were supposed to have a job. And then go back to your job after you donated your time to helping America. It wasn't about creating a job as a politician getting health benefits, getting a retirement fund, getting information for insider trading, getting paid off by corporations, being paid off by central banks, being paid off by foreign governments. This is not what they had in mind. 
but this is what it all turned into. Now, out in Ukraine, we see Putin is out there, and he said something very interesting. It is obvious for all involved that the current Kiev authorities are not looking to solve problems through negotiation. Now, they escalate to acts of terror. This is very concerning, he says. The underlying situation is even more alarming. Trying to provoke violence and conflict can only serve to divert public attention from those who seize power in Kiev and still continue to usurp it and continue to rob their people. So Russia and the rest of the world is looking at the situation and they know what is going on here. Russia, right now, is not going to push for a war, even though the corporate media is trying to convince everyone. Now, Russia came out and they said they stopped this terrorist act in Crimea. Now, the corporate media is out there and they're trying to convince everyone that they're bringing in troops, they're getting ready to do something. They even deploy the S-400 missile system to Crimea because of Russia getting prepared to attack Ukraine. Well, this is furthest from the truth because we've been following this and this is why we do this. So we have some type of record. Back in July of this year, Russia already announced before anything, before any of this even happened, that they were going to be deploying the S-400 missile system to Crimea in August. They already told the world this is what they were doing. Crimea is part of Russia, and the S-400 missile system is a defense system. But the corporate media is out there saying that they're doing this because they're getting ready to attack. And this is not what is going on here. Now, very interestingly, U.S. strategic bombers, they are flying over the Arctic very close to the Russian border. And the U.S. Strategic Command confirmed that several B-52 bombers had performed long-range drills over the North Pole, Alaska, into the North Sea, where they skimmed along Russia's maritime Arctic border. Now, it just so happened that the U.S. bombers, their trajectory coincided with areas where the Russian military has been engaged in defensive buildup in that area. And we can see right now the Russian bombers came very close. It looks like they were doing some reconnaissance, trying to get some information on what is going on. And we can see that the bombers spent 20 hours in the air refueling 26 times using 15 KC-135s and 10 KC-10 tankers to keep the planes flying so they can look at what was going on. So what we're seeing right now from all of this, we're seeing Ukraine heat up, the corporate media, the U.S. government, pushing, provoking, trying to get Russia to do something. And if they don't do something, they'll do it for them, which is called a false flag. And this is the direction we're headed in. It looks like China, Russia, they're continually stepping back, saying, you know, we're, we're not doing this. We're not going to provoke the United States. We're not taking the bait. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to look for peace. We're going to say, let's calm the situation down. But the United States government central bankers, they don't want peace. They don't want the situation calmed down. They want things to escalate. They want war. And if these countries cannot give them war, they will push them until the very end. And if they do nothing, the United States then will use a false flag and blame it on these countries. And one of the easiest things for them to do is some type of cyber attack because the United States government, central bankers, and the corporate media just have to come out and say, Russia just cyber attacked the financial system. 
China just cyber attacked the infrastructure. That's all they have to do. And they can go with that. They'll need no proof. And again, with NATO and the United States, any type of cyber attack is an act of war, and they can start war at this point. Now, out in Yemen, we see the Houthi forces. They are on the verge of a symbolic victory in the southern region of Saudi Arabia after launching a massive offensive near the uh, border city of Najran over the last two weeks. And we can see right now that Saudi Arabia, they are being pushed further and further out of Yemen. And the situation right now looks like the Houthis could be taking back the entire country and kicking out the puppet government. And like I said before, once the U.S. puppet governments in each one of these countries no longer exists, this is going to be a major problem. This is where the entire system will just collapse on its own. And the central bank will have no way of stopping this whatsoever. The U.S. government will have no way of stopping this. And what they're trying to do right now is get this war started before any of this happens. This is why this is all interconnected. This is not like, oh, look, we're having war over here. We're in Yemen. We're in Libya, Lebanon, Iraq, Syria. And we're in Ukraine. And we're, you know, provoking Russia. And that's separate and apart from what's going on in the economy. No, all of this is interconnected. The entire economy is supported by the petrodollar. By keeping these areas controlled with a puppet government where the people do what the U.S. government wants, the system, their system, stays afloat until they bring it down because they know they can't keep this sustained. So they keep the natural resources and they keep the dollar on the natural resources, which is oil. They keep the dollar out in all of these countries, in the reserves of all these countries. And this is what they're most worried about. This is why we're in the Middle East in the first place. It's not for freedom, democracy, and all that other stuff they tell you. It's not because of terrorism. That was created by the United States government, central bankers, and the coalition forces to convince you, yes, this is why we're in these countries. Think about how many times the stories have changed in Syria. Well, we're in Syria to get rid of the dictator. Oh, we're in Syria now to get the Islamic State because that first story wasn't working and they weren't getting any traction so they had to come up with something else. Now they're in Syria because they're trying to get rid of what? Well, they're trying to... They have no story. They just lost the narrative. That's the problem. They're not even supposed to be in Syria. It's a sovereign country. Actually, the United States and the coalition forces invaded Syria. But all of this is interconnected, like I said before. Now, we talked about Libya, and we're going to see that the United States government, central bankers, and the coalition forces, they're going to intensify the bombings inside of Libya. More troops are going to be heading out there. Right now, Italy is denying that, hey, we don't have any special forces in Libya. Where? I don't see them. But they do. We're getting reports from all over the place that, yes, Italy has special forces. And I notice that all these countries pretend, no, we have no special forces, until there's footage, until there's proof, and they say, oh, we only have 10. We only have 20. But we know there's many more of these soldiers in each one of these countries. Governments love to lie. Now, Turkey looks like they're moving further and further away from the United States and closer and closer to Iran. It looks like Turkey and Iran, they have pledged greater cooperation on resolving the Syrian crisis. And this is going to be a major problem for the United States. And what we need to watch very, very carefully is if Turkey closes the border with Syria, this is a game changer for the United States government central bankers. So the United States government right now they're running out of time. The clock is ticking down. And this is not a good situation whatsoever. Russia right now is saying that we're going to keep a permanent military base in Syria. They're not going to put nuclear weapons there. But what they're going to say is they're going to maintain this base. They will permanently be there. And this is another problem for the United States government central bankers. So like I said before... Time is ticking down. 
which means one thing, that the United States government central bankers, they're going to be moving to plan whatever plan they're on right now. And the last plan is the event. Because they have no alternative. Everything they're trying to do is falling apart. So all they have left is to create an event and can, and try to convince the world it is time to go to war. Now, of course, in the United States, they're trying to pretend or keep the illusion alive that they're actually fighting the Islamic State and they're actually doing a great job because we see that the U.S. commander is out there trying to convince everyone that from all the bombings and everything the United States has been doing, the Islamic State fighters, they're on the run. They're down to 15,000 soldiers right now, and their numbers are dropping very, very quickly. But they only started to drop when Russia actually stepped in. The number of the Islamic State was growing for the entire year the United, when, the, when the United States and the coalition forces were bombing in Iraq and Syria. At the point when Russia joined, actually they didn't join, they came in and they actually were bombing the Islamic State. At that point, the Islamic State numbers dropped. But the United States right now has no alternative but to say, yes, we are beating the Islamic State. And again, it has nothing to do with the Islamic State whatsoever. And what we're going to see, because the U.S. military, they are preparing new offenses in Syria and Iraq. They're going to intensify the air ground support. And we're seeing the entire Middle East light up right now. It is a complete disaster. Actually, the Pentagon will not reveal how many ground troops we actually have in these countries actually fighting the Islamic State. Now, they give us these bogus numbers of like 3,825 plus the 300 in Syria, maybe it's up to 42. You have to remember they have an agreement with Iraq where they can have about 4,200 permanent soldiers inside of Iraq. Syria, they're not going to give the real number because they're not even supposed to be in Syria. They didn't ask the government permission, they just invaded. But we have to remember the other trick the United States government central bankers use. They bring in soldiers and they call them temporary. They like to say temporary a lot. And temporary, they can have as many as they want. So permanent, they have the 4,000 or so. Temporary, they have about 10,000. And there's no expiration. But they don't include that in the count. And this is how they trick everyone. No, permanently? No, we only have 4,200. That's all we have there. The others are temporary. The other 10,000 that are there are temporary. We don't have an expiration date. These are the tricks they play. This is what they do. So what we're seeing right now is there are three flashpoints for war. Ukraine, Middle East, and the Pacific, which includes North Korea. And it's like sitting on top of a volcano that's ready to erupt. And the clock is ticking. We're at that point right now where the clock is almost near zero. The United States government central bankers, they have no alternative but to create an event. Yes, can they go the route of peace and ceasefire? But what, where would that lead them? What would that give them? That would give them a petrodollar that is collapsing. That would give them countries in the Middle East abandoning the dollar, kicking the central banks out of their country. The countries selling the oil using gold, silver, the yuan, ruble, or any other currency but the dollar. That would leave the United States completely dead in the water, collapsing. And everyone would point the finger at the central bank. So their only alternative right now is to push this to the next level, to create that event, physical, cyber, to bring down the system. And we're getting closer and closer to that point. Just think about what the Fed said. 
Think about what he said back in 2008. They're repeating everything they already did, but this time they're prepared for it. This time they're ready for war. Doesn't mean we're going to win the war. It just means that they're ready. They've been positioning, moving all the military assets, troops around the world. They're ready for the provocations against these countries. They're ready to create that event and blame it on a country to make it look like another country attacked us. We're not going to see a little shootout. We're not going to see a bomb in the airport. We're not going to see any of that. We're going to see a false flag event on the level or greater than 9-11. This is where we are right now. This is, this is the point where the U.S. government has no alternative but to go down this path. They've been planning this. They've been prepping for this. Operatives are just waiting for the green light. And they're going to get that green light very soon. Listen, everyone. Thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.